Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dell PowerStore uh, online webinar series, where every two weeks uh, we cover a, a deep dive on a specific PowerStore um, area. Uh, this week, the, our presenter is Patrick Hurley, who will be covering a hardware overview of the uh, PowerStore Next Generation Storage Array. Patrick, over to you. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for joining here to give you a in-depth overview of the PowerStore hardware. Starting off with an intro, um, PowerStore is a product offering that is designed to take advantage of the performance and economics of the next wave of storage. At its core, PowerStore is a highly optimized I.O. stack with inline data services, including deduplication, compression, and QoS. With the advantage of integrated data protection, the flexibility to scale up and scale down, PowerStore will deliver industry-leading economics, simplicity, and predictable performance. Additionally, PowerStore has been built from the ground up to cater to multiple consumption models desired by the market. It can be deployed as a purpose-built appliance that serves storage to external applications by the following network storage protocols, FC, iSCSI, as well as SM SMB and NFS. Appliances can be further deployed inside of converged systems that combine them with servers and networking or as a software-defined storage running on commodity servers. Customers will have the option to purchase the PowerStore appliance upfront or as a flexible pay-as-you-go installment option. There are two deployment modes when talking about PowerStore, the first of which is PowerStore T, which refers to the SAN or NAS deployment modes, whereas PowerStore X mo models refers to the SAN or even built-in ESXi hypervisor deployment mode. PowerStore T and PowerStore X will offer an application-centric approach with enterprise-level high availability, commonly referred to as HA, data mobility, predictive analytics for customer application workloads. By incorporating market-defining capabilities such as class-leading performance, the ability to scale up, scale out, as well as the next generation of NVMe, NM, excuse me, NVMe Media, PowerStore will be a successful customer purchase in a wide range of use cases. First off, talking about the ability to scale up and scale out. PowerStore supports the terminology or the idea of clustering, which allows for multiple appliances to be managed in the same manager or GUI. This allows for the compute to be expanded in a scale out fashion. The capability of scaling up and scaling out will offer the flexibility to cu for customers to scale as their business needs change or evolve over time. PowerStore will allow customers to start with a single appliance with two nodes and scale up with capacity by adding expansion and closures. In addition, cu customers will have the ability to scale out their data center infrastructure by subsequently clustering or adding additional two node appliances. The clustering capability will allow, will allow for multiple appliances to be managed in the same interface, allowing for storage to be expanded in that scale out fashion. With a variety of hardware offerings, each model type um, offered within the PowerStore family will include the predefined CPU or memory. For example, a PowerStore 1000 model includes 32 cores across the appliance, as well as 384 gigs of memory. On the high end, the PowerStore 9000 models include 112 cores, as well as 2560 gigs of memory. With a variety of hardware offerings, each model type um, will be 2U in rack height, 31 inches in depth, and about 92 pounds when fully loaded with drives. Both the PowerStore T and PowerStore X models um, start off with the 1000 through 9000, meaning we have 1000 T models leading through 9000 T models, as well as 1000 X models leading through the 9000 X models. For each base enclosure, they include two nodes, which are offered in an inverted arrangement with node A on the bottom and node B on the top. Each node has a four port MES card with two one gig ethernet ports that are used for management and serviceability. In addition, there are also two SAS expansion ports for connecting to the expansion enclosures. Um, within the first initial release, each base enclosure or PowerStore appliance model will have the ability to scale up 
and add up to three expansion enclosures. One thing to note is that every node must have a four port MES card installed, which will be used for the cluster interconnect and management of the appliance. Each node also has a quantity of two IO module slots, which will be used for front end connectivity and also include one power supply or PSU for powering the system in case of a failover. Each appliance from a form fit function perspective has 25 drive slots. Those slots can be utilized by either NVMe SSD or NVMe SCM drives. In addition, depending upon the power store model ordered or configured, there's either a pair, meaning two, or two pairs, meaning four, of the NVMe NVRAM devices. These devices are required and they are occupying either two or four drive slots, depending upon the model configured. To paint a quick picture, for example, a PowerStore 1000 includes a pair of the NV NVRAM, which occupies two slots, whereas the PowerStore 9000 models includes two pairs occupying four drive slots. Quickly run through some of the new terminology that is or has been rolled out on PowerStore. Um, we have the concept of a node. Um, as noted, there is two nodes within each appliance. This refers to the base enclosure or that 25 drive chassis that we had um, observed on the previous slide. Base enclosure um, references to both nodes as well with node A and node B as noted in the inverted arrangement. Expansion enclosures were previously referred to as um, DAEs or disk array enclosures in previous generations of other mid-range products. The term appliance refers to the total base enclosure as well as expansion enclosures if um, the customer has ordered those, those hardware items. The ability to cluster um, refers to the term where you can add and manage all of the appliances within that one management interface or, or GUI. The embedded module relates to the backend hardware, which includes the um, four port card, which is um, selectable depending upon different use cases, as well as SAS expansion ports for configuring your expansion enclosure, as well as the host front end connectivity ports. Um, from a base enclosure perspective, as noted, there are 25 drive slots with a pair or two pairs being occupied by the NVRAM, um, differing depending upon the power store model ordered. The 25 drive slots, or um, depending upon the model, can be configured in either NVMe SSD or NVMe SCM. From a NVMe SSD perspective, we have capacity points starting off with the 1.92 terabyte leading to the high-end 15.36 terabyte. From an NVMe SCM perspective, we support two capacity points, which are the 375 gigs or the 750 gigs. And as noted, um, the enclosure, the base enclosure, is 2U in rack heights. Okay. Now on to the rear um, of the enclosure or rear of the chassis. Within each base enclosure, uh, as noted, there's the two nodes, which are inverted as, as illustrated with node B on the top and node A on the bottom. Each node has the four port MES card, as well as the two one gig ports, which are used for management and serviceability. In addition, we do have the two ports that are used for SAS expansion, um, illustrated with the yellow um, square um, in the top and bottom nodes. Now taking a look into the internal um, view of a node, we have a single node which is illustrated here, which is inclusive of the dual Intel um, CPU chips, which as noted, this is one node, whereas each base enclosure has dual nodes. Um, so just to paint another picture, that illustrates four CPU chips per base enclosure. As noted, um, with depending upon the power store model selected or ordered, it does have the predetermined CPU in memory 
And as a result, the memory would then be um, added in the 24 DIMM slots per node. And um, from an internal perspective, um, this is exactly where you would see the four port MES card, which um, we'll get into the details around the, uh, the offerings in a preceding slide. And also, um, we do have the dual IO module slots. As well. The embedded module within each node provides management, host front end connectivity, as well as the SAS expansion ports, and also the configurable four port card. In addition, the MES card, as it's referred to, in each node supports four ports for management that can be configured in either 25 gig Ethernet or 10 gig base T offerings. For the optical module, there is a mix of SFPs that can be ordered and they'd be utilized depending upon the port speed determined by the installed SFP. Also, TwinX cables, which are supported in both passive and active, are supported within the module. For the base T offerings, the ports are auto, are auto negotiated between 10 gig, 1 gig, or 100 megabit speeds. For additional front end connectivity, each node contains two IO module slots. The configuration must be mirrored across the nodes. This means that if a 25 gig optical module is required, it would then be duplicated in slot one, as well as slot one on node A and B. For 10 gig base T IO module offerings or use cases, uh, the speed is auto negotiated as noted between the or one gig offerings depending upon the connected switch for the 32 gig fc fiber channel io module the speeds are also auto negotiated and also up and up to two speeds lower based upon the installed sfp to paint a picture or an example if a 32 gig sfp was installed it can be ran um, at either 32, 16, or 8 gig speeds. Power Store is designed with a cluster solution in mind. This means that each node needs a high bandwidth, high available link to all other nodes within the cluster. For this reason, the system bond on bonding ports 0 and 1 by default. User data can leverage these bonds as well. This bond exists in a single as well as multi-appliance deployments, single or multi-appliance deployments. For reference, PowerShore requires a pair of 10 or 25 gig layer two ethernet fabri fabric switches, as well as a pair of the one gig RJ45 ethernet switches, which are either 100 gig base T for the management switches. The management switches are not dedicated and any switch that supports 100 gig base T is also acceptable. For reference, PowerStore Power X configurations do not require management switches. PowerStore Model T appliances or configurations require redundant fabric switches to ensure high availability for iSCSI, NAS, replication, external storage import, data mig migration, as well as intercluster traffic. Properly configuring and cabling the physical Ethernet switches ensures that the power store appliance is ready for when the initial configuration is complete. To ensure that the Ethernet switches can provide high availability to power store, configuring them with one of the following layer two internet interconnect options is required. We support the multi chassis link aggregation group that is used for power store virtual link trunk trunking, which is the recommended approach, um, as well as the reliable L2 uplinks. In addition, the direct trunk link is also supported. In 
just to illustrate the data fabric, this is the base enclosure or appliance being cabled from the management switch management ports to the top of the rack switch. One other thing to call out is that for um, non-ELAB switches, we do support RPQs for the necessary cross-functional teams to review the configuration and validate if they can be approved or not. Okay, and now for a PowerStore X config, um, as noted, leveraging the um, four port MES ports on either node to cable up to the switches. And for this example, um, there is the dual Dell um, switches, which are Ethernet supported. And as noted, cabling out to ports 0 and 1 on the MES. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for your time. And I hope that was, was a valuable deep dive into the Trotten, sorry, Power Store hardware. If there are any questions, uh, please post them in the uh, chat and we will uh, try to answer them. Um, if not, just again, a reminder to join us for this uh, biweekly series. Uh, where the next presentation is on August the 18th, where we will be covering uh, file-based workloads. Doesn't look like there's any questions, so thank you everyone again for attending and uh, looking forward to seeing you again.